Hello there, kia ora. There are some universal truths which are fundamental to what makes this country what it is. That we invented pavlova, but it was based on an old German dessert and modified. Or that the man who split the atom was from here, and we are, as a nation, really proud of that achievement. And also vehemently against what it led to. Or that Richard Pierce was the first person to create a working flying machine. It's just nobody else saw him do it. And that Maori never ever ceded sovereignty when Te Tiriti or Waitangi was signed, but there's a bunch of racists out there who continue to believe that that's not what happened. Which is why it's really stupid for the Prime Minister, Christopher Luxon, to say in the House yesterday that he does believe Maori ceded sovereignty in 1840, while being egged on by the Deputy Prime Minister, Winston Peters, who once, unfortunately, held all the Maori electorates. After the actions on Monday of the Mangare National Electorate during an event where the Prime Minister told people he wanted to bring everyone together and Māori have nothing to worry about, he goes and uses the line all racists over the country have been spouting to justify their shitty actions for years. To make it worse, he was determined to point out that he represents the Crown, which means in a way he's telling Māori that they ceded sovereignty to him as the Crown's representative. And he's wrong, because Māori never ceded. We know this through a few different ways, like the fact that the vast majority of rangatira who signed the Te version where the word sovereignty doesn't exist, they signed a version instead with the word kawanatanga, which is the word for governance. It's a promise that the British government was going to be there for British colonisers, but ensured the right of Māori to their own authority over the whenua. In 2014, the Waitangi Tribunal actually undertook a massive research piece to find a definitive answer to this question, and it found after thousands of hours of digging, compiling, and contextualizing that Māori never ceded sovereignty to the Crown, and they never intended to. They pointed out that many chiefs who signed wanted protections and rights for their people and expected their tiriti to form a partnership, not an imbalance of power. The fact that Māori continued to exercise authority over their land and resources and maintain their traditional systems of governance and social organisation actually showed that they had not an expectation set up for a change of systems. That the Crown's actions have conflicted with the basic principles of partnership, protection and participation that the document promises. That it's a living document where today the principles are considered in a case-by-case basis not an overarching ideology that's defined in a single way which shows that the document's meaning is relationship-driven, not a cessation of sovereignty. And from an international legal perspective, the principles of self-determination for indigenous peoples is at the forefront of how any treaty is considered, meaning the version of Te Tiriti signed by the Rangatira is the one they accepted, which does not cede sovereignty. And it's been that guiding principle that has, for about a decade now, been the approach which informed government and how they approach issues between the Crown and Māori. Since he took power, Luxon has been trying to convince voters, in particular Māori voters, that he's their mate, and only rolling back protections for Māori across areas like health, education, services like Oranga Tamariki, while minimising the use of the language because his coalition partners have him by the short and baldies, and he needs to do it to keep his coalition together. But then we start to see the mask slipping. During the campaign, we saw national candidates do the we believe a one person, one vote, but not going to elaborate, wink, wink, nudge, nudge performances from a range of candidates around the country. During Kuranehana, on Monday, we saw the Mangare National Party electorate post racism-laden messages because to quote their apology that wasn't an apology post, they forgot to change their profile. And now we have the Prime Minister admitting he believes in the same racist bullshit spread by groups who pay for front page ads on the Herald to talk about the foreshore or give away free copies of Apadiana Nata's translation of Te Tiriti. In every party in the coalition of chaos, there are elements who seem keen to push division. Our Prime Minister, who promised us on election night that he would govern for all New Zealanders, should not be on that list. But I guess that's the list that he's on now anyway.